Hi, I'm Graham Simpson. I'm a novelist and I have a bunch of questions over there. So every time I look that way, I'm reminding myself of the next question. And the first question is, first of all, who are you and what is your story? It, it's a really interesting question to ask a writer because we, we're all used to answering that question when we're introduced to people and so forth. You know, what's your story? And we manage to answer the story of our lives, basically, in one, two, three, maybe ten minutes uh, at worst. Um, and yet what we're doing is an absolute masterpiece of selection and compression because of the number of things that have actually happened in our lives. And that's one of the key skills um, of, the, of the writer, of the novelist, to say, what are the specific scenes, the specific moments that I'm choosing from a much, much, much greater story? And our novels end up being varying from you know, a whole page describing a tree, you know, stopping time for that instant as we describe a tree, right through to perhaps 20 years of someone's life being compressed into a couple of sentences. Over the next two years, he, over the next 20 years, he worked in information technology. So here's my, my quick attempt in the context of, of being a writer. Um, I spent um, most of my early career working in information technology. Um, at the age of 50, I decided I wanted to be a writer. Um, I went back to university and started studying screenwriting um, for reasons which I'll explain later. And after several years, I had a, well, I was very proud of the screenplay I had. It won a couple of awards. Um, but nobody wanted to make it. And at that point, I realised, as I should have before, that there wasn't much of a market for original screenplays by unknown screenwriters. And then, in fact, um, most studios would much rather adapt a best-selling novel. So I took an end run around it. I took my story, I rewrote it as a novel, and that, The Rosie Project, was a novel, has been pretty successful. Um, Sony Pictures bought the rights, they haven't yet made it into a movie, and in the meantime, I've written four and a half more novels. So that's, that's my story in a nutshell. Obviously, it leaves out enormous aspects of my life, my, my, uh, my romantic life, my family life, uh, my health, all those sorts of things. That's what we do, we select. What advice would you give an aspiring fiction writer? I'm, I'm asked this question pretty often. And the answer I would give is imagine you want to be a neurologist. You probably have some concept of how much work a neurologist has to do, studying medicine first, specialising, getting an enormous amount of experience and so forth before finally qualifying as a neurologist. Well, let me say there are more jobs out in the world for neurologists than there are for people making a living out of writing fiction. So the advice I would give is imagine you're a neurologist and imagine or expect to do the same amount of work, sorry, an aspiring neurologist, and, it, and imagine you expect you have to do the same amount of work um, to achieve your goal. Um, it's not just about having talent, the sort of myth that, you know, some people can write, some people can't, and those who can write will be immediate successes. There's an enormous amount of work, and my experience is the people who do put in that order of work have a very high rate of success in becoming novelists. And those who don't, well, there's always going to be exceptions, but in general, they don't. How have I made a living out of writing? Well, I am one of those very fortunate people who manages to survive uh, quite well on royalties. But I've sold five or six million copies of my novels around the world in 40-odd languages. Most writers are not so fortunate. And you would be foolish to go into writing on the expectation that you will make a living directly out of writing. Many, many writers supplement their, their royalties with teaching, um, with editing, reviewing others' work, coaching, and so forth. So they make, and, and writing nonfiction, uh, journalism, and so forth. So they still manage to make a living out of writing in, in the broader sense. And then there are others who survive thanks to um, a day job, um, thanks to money earned in a, in a previous life, thanks perhaps to inheritance or a partner or whatever. I would just say it would be foolish um, to assume that you're going to make a living out of writing. What have I done in the past or what would I consider doing in the future um, other than being a novelist? Well, in the past, I worked in information technology. It was a job that I really enjoyed, but I would Frequently, there are surveys about what people would consider their ideal job. 
and the winner so often is being a writer. And I can only endorse that except to say that applies to being a full-time writer who is able to live either off their writing royalties or from some, some other means as we talked about before. Um, it's a much, much tougher life when you are pulling coffees all day and trying to get your writing done in the evening. Um, in the future, and I'm thinking about this now, perhaps I don't have any more novels left in me after the one I'm writing at the moment. Um, already I'm coaching, mentoring other people, getting involved in their projects, uh, reading their work, providing commentary and so forth. One of the great things about um, studying screenwriting was that in the film industry, there's a real consciousness of people contributing, a lot of people contributing to the end result, which is the, the movie. And you sit there and you look at all those credits coming down and all of those people, trust me, who are on those credits are thinking, I had a part in Star Wars or whatever it might be. And I feel the same way. Um, call it ego, whatever you like, but when someone gets a, a book or a, not, or a short story out and I've in some way contributed to that, I can say, well, it's, it's, it is what it is, in part at least because of the contribution I made. And that is, um, that's a very satisfying way to live. What made me want to pursue a career in writing and how did I stay motivated? Well, there's two, there's two questions there. Um, I was stimulated by, originally, by a book called The Unkindest Cut by the American uh, film critic, Joe Queenan, who wrote about making a very low budget movie. And I had no experience whatsoever, but I was really captivated by the idea that these days, unlike in the days where, where 35 millimeter film and so forth was just prohibitively expensive, that today you can actually make a, uh, a movie limited only by your, by your talent. Um, as it turned out, that lack of talent was a limitation, but we produced, my wife and I, a 90 minute movie based on a screenplay which I adapted from one of her then unpublished novels. Her name's Anne Buston. She's a, a published novelist now. Um, and I got the screenwriting bug. I knew I had to do a lot more. I knew I had to, to flesh out my, my knowledge. And that's why I went back to, why I went back to study. Um, but that, that gave me the bug um, and that stimulated me. Now, what has kept me going through, through screenwriting and through um, prose, uh, novel and short story writing? I guess probably probably three things. Um, the first is is having small successes. I mean, at one stage, I had sort of announced when I was studying that my goal was to have a Hollywood movie produced. And at one stage, the head of school took me aside and said, Graham, because I was very obviously ambitious and, and, and driven about this, Graham, are you going to be okay if this doesn't happen? And, and I was sort of a little surprised at the question, but understood where it came, was coming from and said, look, I've had so many small successes, uh, a short story published, uh, a short film in a festival or on television or even just screened locally or even just the sheer satisfaction of writing something um, that feels good to have actually come out of me. Um, so so those small successes were um, were a big help. Um, the, the second, and I, I should actually just go back, it's almost the, the, the first really, is the satisfaction that I was referring to of creating something that you didn't know that you had in you. To, to write a story or a screenplay and after multiple attempts and iterations and editing and refinement, you say, wow, I just didn't know that I, I could do that. And I think that's, that's hugely satisfying. And I guess the third one is more irons in the fire, that when you inevitably get rejections, if you can say, ah, yes, but I've still got that other short film that I haven't got an answer on yet, or I've got that short story in progress, or I've got that other publisher that I might be able to send my novel to. Um, that, that really helps um, avoid you losing hope. Um, and so, so the final question was, what, what are the most valuable things I've learned as a writer? Well, well let me go back to, to my original statement that you've got to put in a lot of work. And one of the things I've learned watching people around me is that people who do put in that work have, as I said, a pretty high success rate. But 
There are specific skills that you need to be a writer, and very few people have all of those skills. Some people are very, you know, naturally at least, um, and some don't even have them after doing quite a lot of study or practice because they've neglected them. But you have to, for example, be able to manage a big project. A novel is a lot more than 2,000 words. It's typically 80,000 or so words. Many writers I find can write 2,000 words of fine prose, but can't put it together in a, in a structured story. So being able to manage a big project, being able to structure a big project, being able to tell a, a complex story over that, over that period, over that length is, is something. Then you, you want to be able to write individually good sentences. You want to be able to handle dialogue. You want to understand how people interact. You need to understand the domain in which you're writing. If you're writing about the police, then you actually need to understand police procedures. If you're writing a complex family story, you need to understand something of the psychology of human interaction, how it manifests itself. So there's an enormous amount to learn and you can just keep on learning. So if you ask me the most important thing that I've learned, I'll go back to the idea that writing is a discipline, a profession, a craft. And if you take to it that way, rather than as some sort of magical um, skill arising from talent, then I think you have a very, very good chance of success. And, and certainly if you're, if you're listening to this, um, I wish you well.